All right, everybody, how's it going? You got Eric Castillo here with Warrior Mindset and Motivation here to do another interview with Vet TV's own social media manager, Sarah. Sahutsky. <laughs> Sahutsky, yeah. Sahutsky. Okay, there we go. Hey. I it and then it went blank. So. <laughs> um, no worries. Sarah works at <clears throat> Vet TV. She's a Marine, so she went the the devil dog jarhead route. Um, <laughs> you know, granted she didn't choose the army, but it's okay. I'll give her a pass. It's all right. Uh, <laughs> but I'm going to go ahead and uh, let her give a little bit of a background about herself and so you guys can get to know who Sarah is. So go ahead, Sarah, get, take it away. Yeah. Hey, everyone. Again, I'm Sarah Sahutsky. Uh, Instagram is uh, Sarah with an H. Um, so just so you don't mess it up, you know, with the H and without the H with age. Um, but yeah, I work with Vet TV. I'm the social media marketing manager. So uh, anything that's happening in the DMs, all the content that goes out, memes being shared, videos, trailers uh, across the board on all platforms, Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, Snapchat, TikTok, and YouTube. Um, yeah, I get that going on a daily basis. So yeah, that's me in a nutshell. <laughs> nice. So um, I see you uh... You joined the Marines. At what what age did you join the Marine Corps? I went right out of high school. Yeah. Oh wow. So I, uh, I joined at seventeen too, but I did seventeen and a half years. So, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. So That's I went a little bit longer. But um, <laughs> what what made you join the right after high school? Like I know for me, I didn't have any idea. I was just like, well, I was in the ROTC program in high school, and mm -hmm. it kind of just went that way. It wasn't forced. It was kind of happened organically. So what made you join the Marines? Um, yeah, I don't know. I, I kind of just wanted to do something a little bigger than myself in that sense. I didn't feel like college was kind of really the thing for me in the moment. Um, and I had family that served. Um, my dad was in the army. Uh, and he was in during Vietnam, spent like two years over there without a break, uh, and then got out. Um, but I had always like, I was always brought up with family members that, you know, supported the military. Uh, and one of my uncles was in the military. He was in the army. He was an army medic, but he unfortunately didn't come back. Um, but, uh, just a general appreciation for the military. I kind of wanted to be part of something bigger. Um, and that's, yeah, that's how I, how I chose that. But I, I left pretty much right after high school and, uh, South Carolina for female Marine Corps boot camp, and then, um, did a little bit of time and enjoyed it. And yeah. <laughs> oh, wow. So, so it's separate then it's its own all females in one boot camp or were that, was it mixed? It was not mixed. Um, so females actually in the Marines. Yeah. Females in the Marine Corps, we go to boot camp at Paris Island, South Carolina. Um, males have two choices, either San Diego, uh, west of the Mississippi or uh, east of the Mississippi. They also go to Paris Island, South Carolina. But male and female boot camp is is uh, completely separate. Oh, wow. I did, I did not know that, actually. So that, that was actually a new thing. I thought you, they kind of just stuck y'all together and, and did nope. things. <laughs> <laughs> nope. I mean, yeah, there's some exercises where we are training alongside them. But as far as, um, uh, you know, uh, where, you know, we have our basically all of our uh, living quarters and stuff like that, we're completely separate and we don't really see them that often. So, yeah. Oh, OK. Right. Yeah. Because I know in the Army, like, yeah, they're separate. Uh, living quarters but when mm -hmm. well I wasn't because I was field artillery so we were all males but when we looked at the other uh, batteries they had intermingled within the formation so that's why I was kind of yeah. like oh okay so yeah so like yeah they had their own but the formation had men and women in the other batteries except ours so oh. we were, yeah so ours was all male unfortunately gotcha. but, um, okay. huh that's interesting right cool. and then something looking, new every day right never stop yeah. learning <laughs> <laughs> right um then I've seen you deployed a couple of times too. Can you give me a little bit about where you went on those uh, tours? And I see you did three, I'm not mistaken. So where did you go? Yeah. Um, so I was in the Marine Corps for nine years. Uh, and uh, my first deployment, I, I was stationed uh, mostly within Southern California. So at first I spent five years at Miramar, uh, Marine Corps Air Station Miramar. And then my last four years, I was in 29 Palms. Uh, but among that time, I actually, I went to Iraq in 2006. Uh, and I was stationed at Al Assad, um, and um, I, I did some computer work, basic like networking administration for the Air Wing, uh, and was there for about six and a half, seven months. Came back, um, stayed sta stateside for 
quite a while. And then when I got uh, orders to 29 Palms, I did two back-to-back -back deployments, um, both seven months long. Um, and uh, that was to Afghanistan. So 2010, 2011. Nice. Mm -hmm. Where in Afghanistan did you go? Uh, I traveled around. Uh, I was in Delaram. Uh, I went to Camp Dwyer, Camp Payne. Um, my last deployment, which I will say is the most rewarding job I've ever had, I actually had the opportunity to uh, become an intel analyst where I would basically watch video feed of our drones. Uh, I was part of a uh, drone unit, uh, VMU-1, and uh, we would send drones up and, and watch, uh, keep eyes, you know, on for boots on ground for our troops on the ground and, and tell them like, hey, you know, this compound has got some people moving around. We've been watching it for the last day and a half. Uh, you guys might want to take a visit and, uh, and find out what's going on over there. Uh, we would have uh, targets that we were watching specific people to see where they were going to and from and stuff like that. So it was a really interesting job, uh, but also most importantly, just watching our troops and letting them know on the ground, hey, there's something crazy coming up. Be prepared. So, right. yeah. That's mm -hmm. pretty neat. Uh, yeah. It's funny because I, I was actually in Iraq from 2004, well, late 2004, almost 2005 to 2006. I was in LSA oh, okay. Anaconda, the big oh. <clears throat> the big old hub for logistical supplies. We did convoy escorts there. Okay. And I actually went to Afghanistan three times uh, in 0304 in Kandahar, all of them. And then 2010, 11, and then 13, 14. <laughs> so like <clears throat> I spent some time in Afghanistan did around just like you, you know, up mm -hmm. north, south, east, west, driving around. Every mission was different. Um, mm -hmm. But when you were <clears throat> when you were down there, uh, did you ever leave the, the the gate at all? Did you ever leave the wire at all? Uh, not not on ground. Uh, we always took uh, helos around to when we were hopping around from um, you know PB or you know fob to fob. Um, but uh, yeah, I, I was never in a vehicle on the ground outside of the wire. Um, just I, I mean, I do remember uh, flying on Friday the thirteenth. <laughs> uh in a helo and i'm like mm, i don't know we all kind of got you know goosebumps with that one we're like uh, i don't know how today's gonna turn out but i'm here to tell about it so <laughs> right and i think i think with a lot of veterans too um i think the ones who've deployed and didn't leave the wire kind of i know sometimes they feel like they're not doing their part but they are because especially for you and for me that's outside the wire i'm relying on accurate intel and mm -hmm. someone who doesn't leave is just as important as someone who leaves. And even someone who doesn't even deploy is just as important because you need someone to hold the rear back too. You need someone to hold the garrison down while we're doing our thing. So I think everybody's job is important. And I think I wanted to highlight that piece really fast because I know sometimes people say, oh, well, I was just on the fob. I didn't leave. I didn't go out the gate and kick doors. No, but you did something important for me. You made sure I ate. You gave me intel. You made sure my radios were working. So mm -hmm. then that's just for me to tell you, your job was just as important because you gave intel to those guys saying, hey, you might want to check that out and then giving them probably live intel as it's going. So yeah, it's just as important. Thank you for that. I, I really appreciate that. You know, there, there are some who, who really believe different and Hey, that's okay. You know, that's totally fine. Um, but I, I do appreciate that from you. And, um, at no time did I ever feel that my job wasn't important. Uh, even when I was in Iraq in 2006, I was managing, um, like computer programs, uh, that had very important, uh, mm -hmm. aircraft information on it. And if, you know, aircraft aren't getting up in the air. They're not doing their jobs for the guys on the ground either. So really it all trickles down. Uh, right. I mean, and, and then even to my last deployment where I was doing aerial reconnaissance, uh, I will say it was the most live, live TV I have ever watched. Uh, when you see stuff happening that is, even if it's IR, you know, in black and white pretty much, um, yeah. you kind of become detached from it. But um, no, it is real time. It's really happening to real people. Uh, and although you become detached from it at times when you have the silence of your own mind to sit and think about it later on, you do realize that, uh, the job was important and it in fact affected quite a few people. Um, and, uh, 
yeah, I mean, going on to mental health stuff, like it can do a lot when you start thinking about stuff like that, you know? Yeah, no, totally agree. And I'm glad that you talked about that and how uh, you made a good point about everything kind of trickling down and everything kind of intertwines too. So like every, it's like a very intricate spider web, you know, one of the really nice ones that you see that's outside big looks perfect. Everything mm -hmm. has a part, even the one strand holding it up, everything has like its own role. And Definitely. I'm glad that you, you made that a piece. So you did your time, you did your tours and you transitioned out. Um, how was your transition? Was it rough? Was it smooth? I know everyone has their own experience. Mine wasn't so smooth. So how <laughs> how was yours? Um, yeah, it, it was kind of a mix. I mean, I really missed it. I did get out on my own accord. Um, I just felt like I really wanted to go on to college and to study um, and do something for myself at that point. Like at that point, I was ready to go on to college. Um, so I did, I went to, um, a community college. I had everything planned out when I got out. I had an apartment planned out, knew exactly about the GI bill, uh, knew exactly what college I was going to go to. Um, I had started classes years prior when I was active duty, uh, just little, you know, onesies and twosies here and there. Um, but when I got out, I was still able to use those credits. So I went to the community college that I had gone to years prior. And then I ended up getting an associate's degree uh, in business and doing a transfer program over to San Diego State. Uh, so uh -huh. I was very fortunate with that and to use use my GI Bill for that. Um, right. I ended up getting my uh, my bachelor's of science in, in business. And uh, um, yeah, I, I'm glad that I had the capability to use all the resources, you know, that I needed. Oh, yeah, that's, that sounds pretty good. Um, Sounds like you kind of had everything lined up, and I know that uh, they're doing a somewhat better job with it now when transitioning out than they've mm -hmm. uh, done before. And it's it's good to actually hear from a veteran that actually had everything lined out and planned out, because sometimes you don't, or you have a plan in place, and everything kind of gets sideswiped, and you have nothing. So it's, it's good to hear that you actually had everything lined up and kind of just followed the blocks. And I was noticing, too, that kind of rolls right into my next point that you had a couple of jobs before Vet TV, I noticed. A um, couple of odd jobs here and there. So how how did you actually, <clears throat> excuse me, how did you land the Vet TV job? Did it kind of just fall on your lap or was it just like a who you knew or how, how did that all blossom into what it is now? Yeah, definitely. Um, so yes, yeah, so right after I graduated, I actually got a position before I graduated with uh, a wine company as a territory sales director. Um, it was fun. I did it for a year. Uh, sales just really wasn't kind of what I wanted to do long term. Uh, so I did move on to um, another position completely different. I worked for farmer's insurance as a claims rep uh, and it was okay. Uh, but I just, I wasn't feeling a complete uh, calling to it. You know, I wanted to be very involved with the community. And when I got out of the Marine Corps, I, uh, the trouble that I did have was that I was missing community. I, I was missing being involved in something that uh, was again, bigger than myself, you know? Uh, and I was trying to find so many different things here in San Diego where I could still be connected with the community. And I got involved with a lot of different programs. I would always just help out friends, you know, connecting people, kind of being the conduit between whatever organization, vet preferably veteran owned organizations and what they had going on in San Diego. And I would always go to their events and talk to people, mingle, try to hook people up who are, you know, looking for another business opportunity or another job or some sorts of that. So I knew that community was something that I, I wanted to hone in on. Uh, and I did have a friend. Uh, it's all about connections. <laughs> I had a veteran friend who hooked me up with another veteran friend who worked at Vet TV at the time. Uh, and they were looking for a social media marketing manager. And because I had some experience in the community where I was connecting people, I played a lot to that ability in wanting to stay involved in the community. And I was I was able to uh, go ahead and, and start working here under that premise. Nice. So mm -hmm, yeah, that was that was my way in. Nice. Now, how long you have you been at Vet TV now? Uh, almost a year now. Oh, okay. So mm -hmm. still kind of fresh. I yeah. I will say that I uh <clears throat> I've seen like their ads and stuff and before, but I never really like looked at it too much because I just mm -hmm. kind of would just like scroll on the Facebook. But like I I'll say 
the stuff is the humor is it is something else and <laughs> but like I was telling my girlfriend a lot of it is true though the stuff they talk about is true to a degree like yes it gets a little crude and dark but the core value of what's happening is true uh -huh. and it's a really 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 funny series um uh, her sister actually signed up at, for Bet TV, and she watches it. And she binge watched an entire season of something. <laughs> <laughs> and she yeah, was just awesome. <laughs> she was cracking up and laughing, and she was asking me, "Is like, is this true?" And I'm like, "Yeah, like <laughs> a lot of it is true." And there, and you, you know, there, there's only there's certain conversations when you're in the field that only happen out there uh -huh. because for whatever reason, the brain wants to just have a different thought process out there. And mm -hmm. if you bring it back outside of the field, it just, that doesn't work. Like it just <laughs> it doesn't mesh. So when you're out there, I remember one time for me, uh, we were in the field, it was a two week exercise. And one of my soldiers talking about, he wanted to be called stick boy and shoot toothpicks from his fingers. <laughs> I, I don't know where that came from, but that's just stuff out there that only happens. And I like the fact how vet TV just kind of captures all that. And they give you a little bit of everything. They give you the MPs. The recruiting, that's funny because I have friends that are recruiters and I just laugh because I, I can see them because some of them were not social people. And <laughs> I see them banging the table and hitting their head and stuff because that's, mm -hmm. you know, and then they end up loving it because they, they don't have a choice. So it's like I see and I have friends in all those branches when it comes to like the army and things like that. So when I see those and I start cracking up because I have friends in those areas. And I think it's actually funny to, that that's captured and, and things like that. Um, so now... As you get been here a year, how how stressful is being a social media manager? Because I know you probably get messages, you get likes. I'm sure you get people saying, "Can I come on the show?" Mm -hmm. uh, I'm sure you get all types of crazy messages. So how do you balance uh, the the stress of vet TV and whatever comes with it on top of like your personal life too? Are you able to keep them separate or like, cause it almost seems like it's like a 24 seven kind of job just because of it being an Instagram page. So what are some things that you do? So that way you kind of give yourself like a decompress or you were able to stress manage and kind of just be like, Hey, whoa, I need to put this down. What are, what are some things you do? Um, that's a really good question. Um, so let me at least just start off by saying that, yes, vet TV is a streaming service. We do have a subscription. Uh, it's only five bucks a month, uh, kind of in the same of like, we like to think of it as if like, if Netflix, uh, went on deployment uh, with HBO or like Comedy Central or something really dark, irreverent uh, humor. But we celebrate um, the military experience. We parody the military experience. Um, a lot of it is truth in the stories that we get uh, from from our followers, from our fans, our subscribers. Um, so usually, most of our stories and our our full series have stories that came from people that wrote into us and said, Hey, this happened in the field. Like you guys should use this in an episode. Uh, so we, we like to really, uh, you know, parody the military experience in our best way and knowing that dark humor is really, um, you know, kind of healing the soul. You know, we, we like to look at it where we're providing a release of laughter. You know, we have this, this saying like, uh, laugh now, die later. Uh, or laughing is better than killing yourself because we do have, you know, unfortunately a, a pretty big statistic with veteran and military suicide, but we just want to bring light of like all the shitty times that we had in the field or on duty or on deployment, you know? Um, but yeah, that's, that's what basically in a nutshell of what we do. We have episodes that drop every single Wednesday. Um, shows uh, are constantly reoccurring. Uh, we have a couple of really heavy hitters and we're looking at season twos of those shows coming up here in the new year. Uh, COVID kind of put a damper on it, but still got to create content because kind of segueing into your question is, yeah, with me being a social media you know, manager, it does take up a lot of time, but at the same time, I'm part of the demographic that is enjoying the content. I may not be an 18 year old male, um, and I may not be an infantry guy or a grunt or, you know, it, it, any of that, you know, but, um, I still identify with it. I still identify with the, with the crude, you know, dark, irreverent humor. Um, and, 
my job is to be there for people when they DM, they send, you know, Instagram a, a message or on YouTube, they comment, Hey, this story happened to me. You guys should put this in a show. Um, I love getting that stuff and sending it over to the writers. So any stories we get, screen capture it, you know, send it over to the writers, let them know, hey, this guy had some pretty good ideas. We should think about making a show for this. And as long as we have the time and the budget and stuff, you know, um, we tried, we try to, I think eventually we will. Every single branch and MOS will definitely have a show eventually. Um, oh, we just, geez. It, 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 it's really awesome hearing all the amazing stories that, that come through. Yeah. Right. And for those who don't know, Send a message to the Vet TV on Instagram. I didn't expect a response. I won't even lie to you. I saw the followers. And I was like, well, you know what? I'm just going to give it a shot and see. Mm -hmm. She'll get back to you. She gets a lot of messages. But especially my vets who are Fort Bragg, Germany, and all the craziness that happened there. Send the stories because we got funny stories from over there. I don't remember them all. But uh, I know that there are some times there that are funny. Like I know one time it was so snowy in Germany, the snow was so thick, I tripped out of my uh, FMTV truck and I disappeared in the snow. <laughs> it was so thick. And uh, my whole section for my for my gun crew was like, Chief, are you okay? And I just put my hand up and I'm like, I'm right here. Help, <laughs> help. You know, and they come truffling through the snow to pull me out because I couldn't get up. I was stuck. My leg was stuck on the little step ladder and it was just a mess. Oh, no. So, <laughs> so but... uh. When it comes to all of that, like, what do you do for stress relief? Like, how do you just kind of decompress? And when, when it's time to wind down, what do you do so that way it doesn't get too overwhelming? Yeah, um, I, I find the light in it. I mean, yeah, it's a job, but um, I almost feel like I'm talking to friends sometimes. You know, a, a lot of people don't know exactly who they're talking to behind the keyboard, but yeah. we always make sure that we're getting back with people. Um, we, we know that everyone has a story and everyone wants to be heard. And uh, not only as a company, but even just as a personal thing, I, I love getting back to people um, as quickly as possible. We do get hundreds of messages sometimes on the daily, um, but we do take pride in that and getting back to everyone because like I said, everyone has a story, everyone wants to be heard. Um, but to me, it's not that stressful. I mean, sometimes, yes, of course, it's, it's work and you know things happen and there's meetings and other job related stuff that isn't necessarily social media media related. Um, but I find my time on the weekends and after, you know, after work, I, I, I enjoy, you know, going to the movies when you can, of course, COVID is mm -hmm. you know, a thing right now, but spending time outdoors or with my other friends. Um, and, uh, I don't, I don't feel like it's too far off from what I would normally do because I like connecting people and I like talking to people and hearing their experiences anyway. So, right. So, safe to, it, I guess you can basically say you have a very healthy balance with work and yeah. it sounds like a pretty good environment to work in. And that's always important mm -hmm. too. And I like how, I like how, um, I'll say Captain O'Malley because I just have the respect like that because I just didn't even do that for, but for, for him, I like what he's done with Vet TV and, like I watched a couple of his little uh, interviews with different uh, news medias and the purpose behind it. And I think the one that kind of got me was, I can't remember which one it was, but <laughs> he was on the show with shorts, a t-shirt and a hat. And the guy looked at him like, like, what are you wearing? And he's just like, what? Like, <laughs> I think that's like so Marine, it, Marine Corps, it makes me laugh. Just like the, what are you gonna do like <laughs> and I, I like how he handled the questions and basically what it's for like mm -hmm. it's not for everyone so mm -hmm. if it hurts your feelings tough too bad you know we yeah. get it veterans understand it and mm -hmm. I know that it does a lot for uh even for mental health purposes too like how you were uh explaining and kind of touched on it so if you're able, can you give me a little bit of a touch on how it kind of works with the mental health a little bit? Because I know that's like one of his main focuses as a humor. So from your perspective, what, what does it do for uh, mental health for veterans? Yeah. Um, I, I mean, I was actually a subscriber to Vet TV before I even started. And that was pretty much towards the beginning of, of when they started about three years ago. Um, and I subscribed because a friend of mine told me about it, the, the laughter, dark humor. And I'm like, this is stuff you can't find in Hollywood. <laughs> like they just don't, Hollywood just doesn't do it right. You know? No. I mean, <laughs> yeah. Look at the heart locker. I mean, come on. It, it, 
<laughs> exactly. You know, we we really uh, we really take pride in the fact that um, most of our staff are veterans. They're writing the content specifically for their own demographic. We make light of the stories that, yeah, we may have hated being on deployment at the time. We made a we may have hated being on duty at the time or something, but we make light of it and we joke about it. We celebrate the military experience to the point where we get messages sometimes that are like, hey, I was in a really dark space tonight and I ended up watching one of your episodes and now I'm laughing and I feel good. You literally saved my life. We get those all the time. And I'm really proud to be part of a team where we are giving content to people that is making such a huge impact on their lives where they know that they can laugh about some shit time that they had, you know, that they can remember and um, just kind of look back at it and, you know, call a buddy, find out how they're doing and stuff and be like, hey, I just saw this episode. You probably want to see this because I was dying laughing. You know, it really relates to something that you and I, you know, remember that one time, hey, you should watch this episode. Um, so yeah, the whole, the mental health part of it, I'm so thankful that Donnie created uh, or Captain O'Malley, <laughs> uh, <laughs> Donnie created Vet TV for us because it really helps mentally. I mean, laughter is the best medicine. Right. And I, I agree. And I do like unconventional ways of handling when it comes to mental health with veterans, because even for myself alone, I went through PTSD pretty hard. Uh, before I found uh, Vet TV, I went through my own stuff. Uh, mm -hmm. I been through a lot i've seen a lot i've done a lot and i also almost i almost committed suicide twice because of it um mm -hmm. because it was just so intense and going through a divorce and all the other stuff and you know sometimes uh thinking of all of that and i think of the, the laughter and it's it's interesting because when vet tv does that like it ignites a memory in my head like oh i remember this time like even just now, like talking with you about like the the incident with me falling in the snow, I probably <laughs> said that story to my girlfriend probably like a month or two ago and forgot about it. So it's mm -hmm. like I watch vet TV and then it's like laughing and then now I start remembering stuff that happened, funny things that happened. Like even uh, now I remember that uh, when we were in the field, we would have Laffy Taffies. That was one of the candies. Now they have jokes on the Laffy Taffies. But to read the joke, you have to overemphasize and oversell the joke. Or else you couldn't have it. You couldn't eat it. So we would. Have, that was like a rule, and it was nice that everyone participated, even the battalion commander, the colonel, and everybody. Nice. Like, no, sir. You need to get another candy and read the joke like you actually care about the joke. <laughs> you know. So that I only remember that now because of vet TV and talking with you, and then talking with uh, my girlfriend about it a couple months ago. So it's like it's the laughter kind of like ignites things, and I think that's that's cool that vet TV does that. And like how you said, laugh now, die later. I wrote that down because that's, mm -hmm. it's, it's true. I mean, laughter is some of the best healing for the soul. And it kind of, it kind of puts those monsters at bay. And I, and I appreciate mm -hmm. uh, you writing uh, Vet TV doing what they do because it is helping. And that's the whole reason why I started doing this is just my focus is to just talk with veterans. You know, mm -hmm. like you said, everyone has a story and wants to be heard. Uh, at some point or another, I have a story, you have a story, Captain O'Malley has a story, everyone has a story, every veteran has a story. So I feel like it's, almost, it's my duty to help share that story. Mm -hmm. So that way, veterans know they're not by themselves. And hey, this is another outlet. Like if counseling's not working for you, try mm -hmm. watching some vet TV. Maybe that'll work for you. I mean, you know, it, it maybe it'll make you laugh. And yeah, it's not, I'm not going to say it's abandoned and it's a fix all, but it'll definitely kind of push some stuff aside while, so you can laugh and forget about what you got going on in your life and everything being so stressful and dealing with daily life and all this COVID craziness and everything else and, and things like that. So um, mm -hmm. <laughs> if you, if you had, uh, I know there's veterans listening on here and most of the people listen afterwards and that's where most of the people kind of catch up on everything. If you had a message to send to veterans, um, what would you, what would you tell them? <sighs> um, that's a good one. Um, 
I'd say stay connected, really. Um, stay connected, even, you know, even if later on down the line, you reach out to someone who you weren't really like too good friends with, you know, maybe you saw each other once in a while, but somehow, some way the shared military experience, there's nothing that can replace that. Um, I, I've had people reach out to me years later that said, Hey, I know we had an argument or I know we didn't really like hang out, but I just need to talk to I'm like, Holy cow. Like, yeah, we have that shared military experience that, you know, to stay in contact with people is so valuable. Um, and kind of going back to how I got the job with Vet TV, like, just because I knew one veteran that happened to know another veteran that worked here, that's how, you know, I got in. Um, but yeah, call, call a buddy, see how they're doing, you know, um, call someone you have that you haven't talked to in a while that you served with. And especially, you know, as COVID's kind of trailing off here and, but the holidays, unfortunately, you know, do spark a lot of mental health, um, uh, kind of a downtime, you know, for us, a lot of people can't be with their friends and family. Um, spend some time just texting or calling a buddy they haven't spoke to in a while. Um, Cause those military connections literally do save lives. No, for yeah, sure. They they definitely do. Um, and I actually had a friend do that. Um, I reached out and called him just out of the blue and kind of helped him pull himself out a little bit. And it, it does. And then it's easy because once you're talking with that military member of shared experience, now stories start popping up. Oh, yep. remember this time? Mm -hmm. Remember that time? Remember when you fell and or remember this and you start laughing? Remember when I hit the lieutenant with the <laughs> Kevlar or whatever? I did that. But um, <laughs> but uh you know, those stories come up. And I think, I think that's a very important message is uh, just, uh, and, and it's hard because the isolation, like you, you mm -hmm. may sound like, oh yeah, I want to do it. But then when you're right here and you have the phone and you're looking at like, and then you just stare, you don't do it. So it's, mm -hmm. it's, it's the, it's the getting over the hurdle of doing it for those that are isolated. And for those who don't want to, I won't say don't want it, but it's just, it's hard. You know, mm -hmm. I think there's like a sense of pride and everything, too, because I was like that. I didn't want to do that. And sometimes it was just I was so closed off that mm -hmm. I didn't even think about messaging people. So and that's where I kind of throw it up to the the, the vets who are in a better place. Mm -hmm. Reach out to reach out to someone who who just your inner thought, like, who needs a message? Who who haven't I talked to in a while? You yeah. know, or. Or if you just look around and start clicking, oh, they haven't been posting as much. Let me write them a message, you know, uh -huh. or something like that, and kind of do and kind of do that. And the same goes for civilians too. Do that. I mean, it doesn't just apply to veterans; it applies to everyone. And yeah. you, you kind of you made a really good point at that. It's just especially during this time of the holidays, it you know, people who are by themselves, it's important that they reach out and talk with somebody, and just so they stay connected. And I think that's the the main message here is just stay connected and and reach out to someone mm -hmm. if they if they need the assistance um but uh I, I believe that's that's all i have it was uh it was great to have you on here and nice to get uh a talk with vet tv and this everyone social media manager send her a message she may not get back to you right away because if you heard she gets hundreds but she will get back to you i'm telling you because she wrote mm -hmm. me back and i kind of wrote it as like hey this is what i was thinking about and it took her a little while and I kind of forgot about it. And when I got a message, I was like, oh, hey, babe, look, I got a message from Vet TV. I don't know who's talking here, but they wrote me. So I was kind of excited to actually hear that. And then look where we're at. We're talking here and hopefully doing some more things with Vet TV and mm -hmm. kind of make this like a, a whole little series type deal and mm -hmm. see where it goes from there. So I appreciate you coming on and sharing your story and, and your experience in the Marine Corps and the awesome job you're doing with Vet TV. So I appreciate it. Thank you so much for having me on. I am so stoked to have this conversation with you. I immediately military experience feel like I've known you for years. That's just how it is. Um, so I know that we will probably talk more so after this. Um, but yeah, thank you. Thank you so much for everything. Um, if you're not a subscriber yet, or you see our memes or, you know, videos on YouTube and stuff, check out Vet TV. Um, you're missing out on a ton of laughter and uh, our newest show, actually, sorry, I got to put a plug plug in this, yeah. but 
<laughs> we're talking about mental health. Um, and our newest show right now is Vet TV Presents Off to See the Wizard. So <laughs> in the military, we've got a, a crossover, a Vet TV un universe crossover with three different shows uh, and uh, three different uh, actors. And um, our characters happen to go to a mental health uh, professional to seek help and get to see how that goes. So it's really funny and really interesting. Um, but yeah, I, I've enjoyed my time uh, with you and I'm so very thankful for this opportunity. So thank you. Awesome, thank you. All right, everyone, thank you. And then I will see you guys next week with another show or episode of whoever I'm talking with. I don't know who it is yet, so we'll see. All right, everyone, have a nice day. Bye.